I was going to be teaching them from knowing zero English at all. Hi, I'm Daniela, teacher. And then they're like, why did you come to Korea? And it's like... <laughs> that's something that's really like fluent. Yeah. That's that's definitely not on top public. And that's not in no textbook. Okay, so oh, let's try English. Yay, yeah. we we're, we can do this, guys. Oh. So what made you come to Korea? An ad on like YouTube or TikTok for people that were teaching in like Korea and Japan. I just watched more YouTube videos on people that had taught here before and I Korea had the best benefits because rent is covered for the program that I came with. We just had to pay a little bit of our bills. I really like that they provide school lunches and everything. I was just leaning more towards Korea after researching a lot about like teaching in other countries. Yeah, I don't think it would have been possible to like actually come here if it wasn't for the benefits of like the flight and the housing that was like a huge benefit I wanted to really go to a country that kind of the opposite one of my friends had a TEFL company for the teachers training and I went there at the center they have like all these pamphlets about different countries you can teach at one of them was South Korea and I was like oh South Korea South Korea is very very developed I researched about South Korea and I didn't know anything hmm, this might be a good place to like start afresh and I found an academy that actually teaches English using movies and that was my main so I was, I was just like, hey man, let me watch movies every day, <laughs> get paid for it. I just finished my masters at like a dance conservatoire. Um, and so I was teaching dance stuff in the UK as well. When I, similar to Sydney, I found on TikTok someone talking about if you want to come to Korea and teach English, it's possible. And then the more I researched it, the more I saw like the benefits. Yeah, I definitely want to come over here for sure. And one of my professors in college actually did teach in Korea before teach English. So I like talked to him him and we like talked it through things so it was really nice. Coming to Korea it's a big benefit that like you can teach in the big cities like Busan, Seoul, even like Daegu and Daejeon. What did you think before you came or how it would be? The only impression that I could get was from hate dramas. <laughs> why are they bullying each other so much? <laughs> or why are they all in love? But no 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 and I always had a feeling that there would be like their levels of education would be higher than what I was used to. They're re-evaluating what they're teaching and the curriculum is always changing and in Asia it's like a a bit more intense so I thought it would be like study 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 and then romance on the side <laughs> I guess I don't know actually my school in the UK our head teacher had like a competitive spirit as in like we will be better than Asia at some point oh. so it was like it was like a huge thing that like Asian students are like super super smart and I know like in Korea they have the really high level entry exam for college and so for me I thought I would be coming to like super super advanced students and also like the behavior system would be like a lot better than the UK because there's like a huge element of like respect for your elders in Korea. So that was my impression. I think they'd be really clever students and they'd also be really well behaved as well. I was applying to teach elementary school. I thought I was going to be teaching them from knowing zero English at all. So I thought the same thing that they would be really committed to their studies and that the students would be smart and everything. But I was under the impression that like I would be teaching them the alphabet. I think for me, I thought a lot of the students had this like huge discipline in the classroom where they like couldn't go off topic or let their mind wander. Sometimes I feel like I'm a fun teacher. When their homeroom teachers come in, I find they're a bit more strict. If we're playing a game and the kids are goofing off a little bit and they're just having fun, I'm like, they're kids, it's fine. But sometimes their homeroom teacher is like, don't do that, apologize. I'm like, it's okay. <laughs> And I could get scared. Yeah. <laughs> Some of my third graders are like fluent in English. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, I don't need to teach you the alphabet. Yeah. Overall, I think that they were more advanced than what I thought before coming to Korea. Yeoncheon, which is a super rural place, whereas this year I moved to Seoul and teaching a bunch of kids who like go to like really advanced hagwons, being like you said, completely fluent in English. Because in the UK, we don't really have like hagwons or academies for like language learning. So to have students that were like fluent in English, English already in like grade four it was crazy. My first two years, I was at a hagwon. I didn't have any expectations. I was just like, let's just fill the room. Let's just walk in, introduce ourselves. Hi, I'm Daniela, teacher. And then they're like, why did you come to Korea? And it's like, <laughs> it's like fluent English. And you're like, um, so yeah. And then when 
I transitioned to public school, the levels were very like wide ranges. Especially in my school, they've divided lower, middle, and advanced English. The advanced English classes, we just we we're just fooling around. <laughs> but I remember like it was the first week of school. I have a fluent student in my sixth grade, and I was just trying to suss out all the students. We were learning like something very basic, like where did you go last weekend or something. A lot of the students did very well, but then he came up to me after, and he was quite quiet the whole time, and then he just said, "Oh, teacher, where's your favorite spot to go on vacation?" <laughs> And I thought the word spot was so like, I didn't think you would know something like that. You know, like where's your favorite spot to go on a vacation? That's something that's really like fluent. For sure, like yeah. that's that's definitely not on Pap Papa Go, yeah. for sure. And that's not in no textbook. By the end of the year, we were having like full conversations just between us about like where his favorite spot to go on vacation is, you know? And it was just great to like see one of my students have such like a fluent understanding of like the English language, which is something I really wasn't expecting. Did any of you have any like stereotypes about math in Asia. I guess I assumed that the math would be pretty advanced for elementary level in the US, which it was like addition and subtraction. And I think I asked my kids what they were learning in math one day because they had all their math textbooks, teacher algebra or like calcul <laughs> calculus. And I was like, what do you mean? In the UK, I don't think we have any like math academies. Was really shocked at how like advanced their maths must be at such a young age already. Some of my kids, they go to Math Hog One every single day for yeah. at least an hour. You know those YouTube videos where it's like Americans take like American high school math test and they're like, oh, this is so easy. And then they give them a Korean one and they're like, yeah. Excuse me? <laughs> Am I doing physics now? <laughs> when I was teaching at the Hagwon, they'd come from a math academy to English academy and they'd be like, Teacher, can you help me with this? And I'm like, Oh. Huh? <laughs> Why are you doing this now? Are you like getting ready for high school? And it's like, it's like they're doing high, my high school level at like elementary. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> what do we have here? So find, find the value of X and Y. Oh boy, this is shapes. <laughs> Why? That's my question. Why do we have to do this? I kind of remember doing this in maybe high school, <laughs> middle school or high school. Pythagoras, no? Pythagoras? Oh, oh Pythagoras. because this is the hypotenuse. The yes, 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 yes. Pyth yes, Pythagoras theorem. Oh. Theorem. Okay. So, oh. Does anyone remember the equation? <laughs> A, a, a squared a plus B squared, B squared equals C squared. C squared. So, it's, 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 I'm pretty sure we learned this in high school, but I couldn't solve this even when I was like 16. But again, I was in advanced math, so I feel like the students who, who weren't, and I went to public school too, so the students who weren't in an advanced level, they might not have even learned this in high school. Do you think you learned it in college at all? At university in the UK, you just do your subjects. You don't take anything else. Wow. No other classes. Wait a minute, do you do that in math? Well, minors, and then we also have liberal core, so we have to take like math, science, language, Is whatever. Is it done? It is. What is this trap? Oh. That's why we're stuck there for four years. <laughs> but I took algebra, which is algebra is what we solved earlier, not whatever this is. Maybe like advanced maths in A levels, because I never saw this when I was doing my GCSEs. In high school, I don't think the regular level math even went up to calculus. You just had to take up to algebra. So speaking of college and everything, guys, <laughs> what is this? Oh. oh no. Okay, so oh, let's works. try. Oh, English. Yay. We 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 can do this, guys. I've read this before. This went viral last year because of the of the, of the exam. It? Yeah, I remember I saw it posted on the internet and me and my friend read it and uh, no, 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 like I don't understand. The first sentence is about the professional status. So I feel like it would be either like admired or challenged. Mm. <laughs> I would say pa paid or challenged are um, my votes, yeah. Final answer, paid. paid. <gasps> oh, so I would just like to say that I didn't vote for paid, yeah, I voted for yeah, yeah. <laughs>
Yeah. But it's funny because I've read this last year with my friend because somehow it went viral on the internet because I think people were like, what the hell, this is so difficult. And we read it and I think she's a lot smarter than I am. And we both were like really struggling to understand how do your textbooks in elementary compare to like back in your home countries? I feel like Korean textbook is more advanced. I think it's definitely more advanced from what I was learning, at least elementary school. And I imagine middle school and high school would be even more difficult. I remember being in an elementary school learning counting. Like we would do, if you have five apples and you take away two, how many yeah. apples do you have? Yeah. And my kids are doing algebra. <laughs> yeah. There was like a famous Korean English video where the, they took the high schoolers to a high school English class in Korea. They were showing paragraphs and like really specific grammar things. And all of the high schoolers were like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know how to solve this. I feel like that's pretty similar. Even like our like native level, us in like English class in high school, I was like, I was not learning how to do any of this. I don't know what this is. Like, I feel like it was really, really advanced. The textbooks here are so much more like fun and like slower paced, which is like, sounds like a bad thing at first, but like when you think about when you're first learning a language, I feel like I would have enjoyed that because sometimes I feel like when you're older and you're learning a language, they just assume like, oh, you can memorize all these words all at once. They give you like a list of like 50 words that you have to memorize in one chapter of the textbook when it's like, actually, I would love to learn like 10 words at a time, please. So I feel like it was very different. Maybe because I was in the Midwest, it's more central. Like we didn't even have to start learning a second language until middle school. I think you had to take it for one or two semesters. So like not even really a full year. And then high school, it was required to take it for two years. And after that, you didn't have to take it again. Well, because we started learning our second language in 11 years old or something. Nationally in the UK, it's French for everyone. I picked Spanish for my last two years of high school. The textbooks that my students are using right now is the equivalent that I was using when I was 14 to learn a new language. <laughs> like, what's your name? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ooh. If you ask me to ask someone like, where is the supermarket? A whole sentence, a whole like paragraph, I think it might be quite difficult. So I don't think I could solve it. At this point, I feel like if you gave me that paragraph in Korean, I could solve it faster yeah. than in Spanish. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, I feel like the way that they set up English learning here, it's for lifelong learning. Whereas like back home, learning a second language. In South Africa, we have 11 official languages, right? So, which means that not everyone's first language is English. What they do in elementary school is that learns English. Afrikaans, which is like Dutch derivative, and then Zulu, you all have watched Black Panther. Elementary school, you learn both of them, both sides, and then when you get to high school, then you split which language would you like to move for more. If you put like that, obscure languages. Nope. No. I did French in high school. If I saw pay or pay scales in the paragraph and one of the options is paid, I'm going for pay. <laughs> So would you say that South Africa is more similar to Korea then, I guess? You said that you learned another language all throughout elementary school and middle school and high school, kind of how they do English. Yeah, some students are taking English, they want to use English, they want to go overseas or whatever. Some students are just trying to get the mark and move on with life. Yeah. So for a lot of us, we're just like, ah, just give me the mark. Yeah. <laughs> just give me the mark, donde esta la biblioteca? <laughs> In your countries, guys, what is like the literacy level like? US was something lower than I thought, I guess. Like 70 something, it was not good. Yeah, it's like 73 or 74 percent. In the UK is about 78. I also just searched this and it said like 95 and I'm like, ooh, it's high, it's high but I don't know who did they ask? <laughs> <laughs> who are they asking? I definitely think in the UK it differs in what part of the UK you're from. So grew up in London and the high school I went to, it was like a Catholic high school. And then I moved to the countryside to a more like relaxed environment. Implement of like getting really good grades was a little bit less than what it was in London. If you go further up north in the UK, the difference in the education system is really, really low. I guess that's probably why too the US is in the 70s because it's such a big country. In elementary school, I was at a private school and then I switched to public school and the level is so different. You're talking about the country as a whole. Like it makes sense that the average is only in the 70s. Yeah. Do you remember when like George Bush was president and he made like the No Child Left Behind program. Cause that was supposed to like fix the literacy rates, but then for like, yeah, like it didn't work. Like it was, I think cause it relied on like standardized testing. And so it was the kind of thing where it's like the chicken or the egg, like there's no government funding. So they can't prepare for the test. They can't prepare for the test and they don't get good grades. They don't get government funding. So it was like a whole back and forth thing. But I feel like that's part of the reason why the rates are so low. Cause like no one can figure out a solution. Do we know?
know what it is for Korea? I'm pretty sure it's like 99 or something. <laughs> it's like almost 100, yeah. Even like going from a countryside school, I can understand the teaching is really similar and the standard is like the same for like each of the schools, no matter what the area is. I have a friend that teaches kindergarten and her kindergartners in their hagwon write full essays in English. <laughs> Multiple page essays. <laughs> <laughs> in at five years old, which is insane. <laughs> because they have like younger YouTube ones here, which is just like the minute they walk in, they have to speak English the whole oh, time. That is true, yes. Yeah. Personally, I don't think that would fly in the UK. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think you could have an academy for kindergartners where they only speak a new language that they're learning. That's why their literacy rate is 99%. <laughs> <laughs> I did think that surprised me actually when I first came here. They address you by your first name. High school and elementary school, mm. they say Miss. Yeah. yeah, so I would be like Mr. Ward. For me, it felt a little bit strange, but having the teacher in front almost feels like the Mr. or Mrs., you know, that they have. Yeah, I was kind of surprised like when we did orientation and they kind of said, like, all your kids will call you Sydney teacher. I had to explain Mr., Mrs., Miss, and Doctor to my students not that long ago, and they were were very confused by yeah. it and I was like me too honestly <laughs> and my co-teacher asked me and she was like oh so in the US what would they call you and I had to explain that it's by the last name not the first name but I find Sydney teachers much easier so I stick with it. <laughs> I feel like that's a big reason why the kids get confused between all the different miss, misses, mister because they don't have like that exposure to it in the classroom all the time like I feel like that's how we learned it like I remember like one of my teachers having to explain to me what the difference was between miss and missus was. And like that's how I learned, but it's like if they don't have that then it's like how would they know? When they call you, they call you by sending a teacher or a tea teacher or whatever. The Korean teachers, they say they all say son seng name or sem. Yeah. And I remember when they used to be like son seng name and I'd be like, oh, I, I thought it was this one teacher's name was son seng name. <laughs> so I'd be like, oh, I'll Three go. syllables. Yeah, because yeah, 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 it's three syllables. Yeah. I mean, Korean has this. So I was like, oh, I'll go and get her. And then I'd get her and they're like, no, 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 not the son seng name, the other one. And I'm like, you're like, there's more. What does mean? <laughs> and they're like, like, oh, it just means teacher. And I was like, I thought your name was something. <laughs> My kids are really funny with that too because no matter whether I talk to them in Korean or not, they're still under the impression that I don't know Korean. And so sometimes they'll call like something name and I'll turn around and they're like, oh, oh, sorry. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I can I will respond to that too. Like, yeah. I think you need me. Or they'll say it and they'll be like, oh, sorry, teacher. And I'm like, it's okay. Hagwan, <laughs> they say something name. And then when I got to public school, they say I'm Wonomin. And I'm like, who's Wonomin now? <laughs> who's that now? <laughs> <laughs> Which is native teacher. But I was like, I don't know these. They need, to, yeah, they need to include that in the orientation. Just be like, tell me where he is. What is he wearing? I thought it was so funny when I figured out that because of that, some of the kids don't know the other teachers' names. Like one of my co-teachers asked my kid, like, because they were like, oh, something. And they were like, what's my name? They were like, uh. No. But it's so cute because obviously my name is Cam, so they've started calling me Cam Sam because it rhymes. Oh, <laughs> so it's so cute. I love it. When I went to one of my schools in Yeonju. Finish the class and like usually I just say okay goodbye everyone and then they would like stand up they would like speak and like bow really like strongly. Oh, I was yeah. so surprised. I feel really nice as like a foreigner to like experience. My kids have a song that they sing me sometimes <gasps> before they leave. My young ones in Korean and they'll all line up by the door before they go. Like you said, that would never happen in the U.S. Like yeah. you're packed up and halfway out the door by the time the bell rings. Yeah. <laughs> My one co-teacher has this like discipline thing. People are getting too rowdy or like noisy, especially the first graders because they're still young. She do this. It's called it's clap three times. Baksu said one, she jack, and then one, two, three, and then when you clap three times, you keep quiet. So I always join and I'm like, <laughs> and she's like, she's like, no, 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 not you. <laughs> she's like, this is for them to calm down, and I'm like, no, but it's so fun. <laughs> that was weird. no, but then it's like, <laughs> and you're like. Does they not do eyes on me? I don't actually. Oh, I do eyes on me, then they say eyes on you, eyes on and it is silent. It's so good. <laughs> and they love to give compliments too. Like, I get called ha handsome teacher. Oh. What do they want? <laughs> <laughs> what did 
like, teacher, you're so beautiful. I'm like, you're still getting homework. Like, yeah. I know your tricks, young man. But I don't think I ever said to my teachers, like, oh, you're very handsome or you're pretty. But here they do it all the time. Yeah. It's really nice. Yeah. 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 That was a big shock to me, but I love it. Every yeah. time I walk in and I get teacher so beautiful today, I'm yeah. like, I, I didn't do anything different, but. <laughs> I was a culture shock for them, especially because I do braids, like box braids. They're really like my hair grows 20 inches. So the first time I did it, they're like, teacher, reggae mori. And I was like, mm, mm, mm. Close enough, it's fine. No, but then they were like, it's so beautiful, can I touch it? And I let them touch it. I know a lot of other people wouldn't allow it, but then I'm like, this is the only time you're gonna experience it, so. And I did it well, so. <laughs> and then like the next month, I changed it to like blue, and then they're like, teacher, next month? What what color, green? And I was like, green? Okay, no, and I was like, let's take votes, sure. everyone. Let's take votes. What color next month? <laughs> it was so cool. I feel like the biggest one that's like such a cultural difference is the I love you. Oh, that yeah, they teacher, all of my kids, yeah, always hearts and say, teacher, I love you, like every day before they leave. That's not how it is in the U.S. at all. If you said I love you to a teacher in elementary, <laughs> HR department for the rest of your life. HR department. You're not making it out. Right. It's like the equivalent of when you were in school and you accidentally called your teacher mom. mom. Yeah. That stops in middle school. I haven't gotten there. <laughs> they don't love me. <laughs> my co-teacher, because she teaches science too, and she was a homeroom teacher before, she had one with her kids when she was a homeroom teacher that hello is, <laughs> is like, I love you to say hello. And she would call it out to them like when they were out playing for lunch. And like, I was so confused at first. And she was like, oh, we just made it up together last year. We say hello as I love you. Wow, <laughs> yeah. that's so cute. I just get, let's go DDC and gang gang. <laughs> I don't get no I love you or anything. No, they're like, teacher, let's go DDC. And I'm like, who's DDC? Who, what is this? It's um, one of Min's friends. <laughs> it's why it's, it's Sunset Min's friend. friend. No, yeah, Sunset yeah. Min's cousin. Yeah, yeah. One of Min's friend. Yeah. <laughs>